Yeah. We're not joking. Six thirty. Six o'clock. I don't know. Blue hour shirt. I got here at six. Yeah, here at six. All right. Well, we got to play a little bit tonight. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll tell you what. How about if we do this tonight? I know you got you four girls. Why don't you all come up here and sit in front of my wife? Yep. You four girls, come on up here.
them if they travel. We have we have coming up in the harvest party. We have in October the 10th from um, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. When is October the 10th? Saturday. Saturday. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, we got that coming up the harvest party. We actually have sign up sheets for it. I know a lot of people have filled out already. I've done seen that. Uh, we had three of them around Sunday, and a lot of us filled up. But I guess we'll, we'll wait till this Sunday to make sure everybody's here. We can send them back through again. Missions conference. Be in prayer for missions conference coming up in, uh, on the 11th through the 14th of next month. Just really pray. Uh, if you want to participate in that, get some things together. Uh, whatever whatever they got going on with that, we'll have, I'll get with Pastor when he gets back, and Tom, and and whoever else is kind of running this thing, we'll get with that. And so I can let you a little bit more know what's going on, whether there's food and stuff like that. I think there's some food coming for the missionaries and sign-up sheets or whatever. We'll get something together for that. But thank you for coming out tonight. We had, I know that some of the teens showed up here at 6 o'clock. And uh, there was nobody out here to, to uh, do games and stuff like that. But sorry about that, teens. But hey, we're here. We're going to be in church tonight. Be here for Sunday. All right? Be here for Sunday. I know a lot of you here for Sunday school. And uh, if you're watching on Facebook, be here for Sunday school. 10 o'clock. All right? You'll get a blessing from the Word of God from the, through the teaching and different things that goes on. Pastor Seacrest Coffee Time. How many of you watched that this week so far? I know I have. It's been a blessing. Amen. I know he's changed the time on a little bit since he's been away. Street evangelism, I think, has been canceled. So will they get it back? Postpone. 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 Not canceled. Just postponed. I'm sorry. That's better word. That's better come out. <laughs> postpone. So I think that's about it for our um, uh, the announcements here. Uh, let me make sure we go through all this. Yeah, I think that's about it. All right. What's all saying? Let's turn to song. Take your song book. Turn to page one hundred and seven. One hundred seven.
pen. Let's take up a prayer request real quick. And then we'll have some prayer time. All right. Who wants to go first? Ms. Robin. I have a praise. You got a praise. Uh, my nephew was working in Burger King last night uh, down in Southern Maryland, and uh, two men came in with uh, with guns. They, he didn't think they were real guns, but he didn't take any chances. But uh, his assistant manager was stabbed, and fortunately he was stabbed between organs, so he wasn't hurt seriously. But um, my bro my nephew wasn't hurt at all, so God was you know looking out for him as far as I'm concerned. I didn't mean to minimize that. <laughs> no, no. Hey, thank God. Is that you see your nephew? Mm -hmm. You're safe. Amen. Pray for the guy that got stabbed as well, too. Hey. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, please keep praying for my brother Bobby uh, for salvation. And he called me on my birthday and just left the message that he was in the hospital and they didn't know what was wrong with him. And uh, no one would call me or return my calls. And finally, he called me and just left the message and said, I'm okay. Uh, I'll get back to him, but he never did. Okay. And also, please pray for the people that are suffering from these tor you know, terrible uh, hurricanes. I mean, those yeah. are everything. And it's all. The Bobby for salvation and pray yeah. for the, the people that are yeah. suffering through these hurricanes. that both of Oscar's sisters are now home from the hospital. It's been a long, drawn out thing, but they're both home now.
might spin on you a little bit. Not skin. Yeah, for a long time. Uh, that God gives wisdom concerning the nomination of the uh, new Supreme Court justice, who, whoever that may end up being. requested prayer uh, a couple weeks ago for a retired pastor, Rowan Fay, and the Lord has touched him and he's finally coming out of this virus. <laughs> Good, amen. Rowan Fay. Rowan Fay. A uh, local uh, retired pastor and his wife, uh, Pastor Orrin and Miss Ruth Perdue, um, uh, they have caught the COVID-19 recently and they're quarantined at home. Uh, it's not good to call them because they get worn out real bad just by just by even phone calls, just by talking on the phone even. So if uh, if you pray with them, uh, pray pray for them. Yeah. Father and 
Yeah. Okay. 
instead of coming to God God's way or forgiving other people God's way yeah. or going to the people that we need forgiveness from God's way, we try all kinds of things, but I wasn't done yet. I saw my mom sew one time in my life, but I knew where her sewing kit was. Oh, no. So I went and went into there and got a needle that had some thread on it. Uh -oh. I went into the dark closet and it oh. still had the tape on it and it still had the paper on it. And I started sewing. About five minutes later, I figured out you have to tie a knot on the other end. <laughs> I just been going in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. So I tied a shoe knot on the inside and finally I got it all done. And you know what? I could still tell that it was something wrong with my pants. <laughs> How long do you think it took for my parents to realize when they saw my pants that it was something that was wrong? Immediately. How long does it take God to figure out when we try to fix our own lives? Mm. Yeah. We put patches on it, and we try to sew it up, and we put Elmer's glue on it, we do all different kinds of things. And when we've offended people, and we've done wrong, instead of getting it right, what do we do? Well, we try a little bit of Elmer's glue, a little bit of this, mm. a little bit of that. But it doesn't work. When I was in the Navy, I went to a lot of places. When I went to Rome, and I saw people, ladies, elderly ladies, climbing up the stairs in Rome, <laughs> bare-legged, here down, and their knees bleeding, trying to find forgiveness. <laughs> History tells us there are many cultures that sacrificed their own children because they were trying to find relief from guilt. Mm. Wow. We do a lot of things in life to try to run away from guilt and shame, don't we? And we try to cover it up and we try to make it right, but there's, it's just not how it works. So we're going to look at what the Bible teaches about forgiveness. And the first thing we're going to look at tonight is all truth. The true forgiveness begins and ends in the heart of God. We're going to look, read in Luke chapter 7, read the story here that Jesus told of his encounter at some guy's house that never did figure out forgiveness. You know, you can be in the church your whole life and never understand what God has to say about forgiveness. Simon was that way. He never did understand. It says in verse number 36, Luke chapter 7, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. What question I'm going to ask you now, I'm going to ask you at the end. Who invited this lady? Who invited this lady? Nobody did. Simon was so worried about everybody that was going to be there, but this lady didn't care who else was there. She had to get right with God. And I hope that's where you're at tonight. You don't care who else sees it or what else happens. If God speaks to your heart tonight, it doesn't matter who's here. God's here. And be a Jesus. Thirty-eight says, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and then wiped them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. She didn't go in front of everybody; she went behind the scenes, and she did worship before God and say, "It was her way of saying, God, I'm sorry." Hmm. She didn't come up with a hundred excuses. You know what we do when we sin? We come up with a hundred excuses. Yeah. We come up with a hundred rationalizations. We come up with people in our life that haven't treated us like, and we blame it on them. Forgiveness is awesome, but it has to be God's way. Verse 39, now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. If he 
you don't get this forgiveness thing right, you're even going to question who Jesus is. Yeah. If you're trying to make things right with God without doing it His way, what's going to happen? You're eventually going to start questioning who God is. And if He really is who He says that He is. Verse 40, and Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have someone to say unto you. And he talked about here in verses 41 and following about two people that owed a lot of money, and one of them owed a little bit, and another one owed a whole lot, and he asked, if I forgive the one who owes the most, who's going to love the most? The one that's forgiven the most. Of course, Simon didn't realize that he needed to be forgiven. He didn't put himself in the same category as this same lady. But you know what Simon never heard? Verse 48. Thy sins are forgiven. This sinner lady that had a bad reputation in town, this sinner lady who was not invited to this meeting, it didn't matter who was looking, it didn't matter who was there, she was there to meet Jesus and get things right. Some of us might they need to do that tonight. Some of us have grudges that we haven't taken care of. Some of us have people in our lives, but if they walk through this door right now, your blood pressure would go up 20 points. Mm. And we're going to see how to do how do you do that when somebody hurt you so bad? Mm. And we're going to see how to do it from the Bible. Amen. The woman was forgiven. Simon was never forgiven because he never saw his needs. First thing I want to see, that was the introduction. All true forgiveness begins and ends in the heart of God. That's point number one. It appears that this lady is the one who started the forgiveness. Because she sought out Jesus. She went to his feet, brought an alabaster box of ointment, was crying, washing his feet with tears. I mean, she initiated everything. It says before the foundation of the world, Jesus was already thinking of her and was already thinking of you and you and me. Nobody in this world initiates forgiveness, this true forgiveness, unless it comes from the heart and plan of God. Amen. That's why you can't work up forgiveness. You can cry, and you can cry, you can put out the food, you can put scotch tape on a relationship, you can even try to sew it. But what you need is some new clothes in Christ. Yeah. I'll just read one verse in, in this point. It says, John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1, 4 tells us the same thing, only about us. For those of you who have been a Christian for a while, you can get up here and give a testimony. When I have unforgiveness in my heart, whether it's between God or another person, you know what? I cannot see the glory of God. I cannot experience my full relationship with God. So if you think forgiveness is going to begin with you, that's not going to happen. Because we don't have it in us to forgive somebody else. We don't have it within us to do what only God can do, and that's to bring about a spirit and an attitude of forgiveness. So let's go to Ephesians 4.32. Uh -huh. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So Ephesians 4.32 says, Why did God forgive you? What does it say? 
Why did God forgive you? It's in that verse. Be kind, tender hearted. Why did God forgive you? Doesn't it say He forgave you? For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. And when we get to the end of this message, the whole thing is based on this verse. The only way you're going to be able to forgive somebody that has hurt you so bad is for Christ's sake. Amen. It's not going to be because you're going to be able to work up forgiveness on the inside. It begins and it ends in the heart of God. Forgiveness is something that flows through us and back to God. The only way we can really be forgiven or forgive is for Christ's sake. Secondly, the person who is offended has the right to set the price for forgiveness. Now, my son and I are playing catch and we're playing by your house. And my son throws the ball through the window of your house and shatters it. And I put a little pressure on him and says, go make that right with him. And he comes up to your door. Well, here's three bucks. Everything's all right, right? <laughs> the person who is the offended person yeah. is the one who has the right to set the price That's right. for reconciliation. It's God that sets the price. Yep. For us to get right with Him. Mm. It's not us. Sometimes we want to do things and do more things for God instead of going to Him and seeking forgiveness or forgiving our brother. We'll do a hundred other things to try to cover up the guilt the Holy Spirit is putting in our hearts and says, You need to get right with that brother. You need to get right with your dad. You need to get right with your son. You need to get right with this person. And we do a hundred other things, including how much we So what was the price that God required? The blood of his son. Boom. So when I don't participate in the forgiveness that begins in the heart of God, whether it's to another person or to God himself, I am going against the blood of Christ. And what he paid for. Because he didn't go there just to go there. He went there so that we could experience his forgiveness and to give his forgiveness. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. What was the price that God required for forgiveness? The blood of his own son. It's not something you can make up. You can't do penance. You can't do some trips to some place in the world. You can't sacrifice your children. You can't crawl on your knees on some steps without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9.22, there's no... So if you're trying to get forgiven some other way, then it's not going to work. Third thing, he who is offended must pay the greatest price, not the offender. What does that mean? Well, let's say I walk into your house and you have this vase, or I guess it would be a vase, in your house. They've been in your family for 150 years, the great, 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 great grandmother. And I drank that vase. I would feel terrible with who would feel more terrible? You would. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. yep. You see, he who is offended must pay the greatest price, not the person who's saying they're sorry. It says in Isaiah 53, 3 through 6. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we did as it were hid our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And some more things there. But I wanted us to see what the price was. 
It wasn't set by us. It was set by God. And the person who is doing the most is the person that gets offended. That's God. And not us. Right? Okay. So we're seeing already the answer to the question. It is much harder to forgive than it is to ask for forgiveness. next thing that I want us to see about forgiveness, he who forgives must also forget. I'll forgive you, but I'll never, never, never forget it. You ever heard that? Uh-huh. Well, aren't you glad God doesn't talk to you like that? Mm-hmm. Amen. I'll forgive you, but I'll never, ever, ever forget it. But we as humans, you know what? We remember what we should forget. And forget what we should remember. Uh-huh. Isn't that how it is? Yes, sir. You know, if you go to a funeral, at the funeral home, they're, they're talking about that person, how, how he was one of the best persons that ever lived. And a week before that, they were cussing him out. Right. Is that how things go? Right. My friends, I'm just throwing this in here. Give people the flowers. And give people a love before they're in a casket. Yeah. Amen. That's true. Amen. There are hundreds, there are thousands, there are millions of sons and dads and moms and daughters who would give anything just for one moment to tell their dad or mom or their child that they're sorry. Yep. But they don't. And then they weep over their grave and tell them how sorry they were, but they can't hear it anymore. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, you, I would venture to say most of you don't know these verses, but we'll read them. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, have been quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. One of the ways that people back in that day made lists was they made paper out of wax. And they had a piece of wax paper and they had a metal writing utensil and they made a list. What does it mean blotting out of the ordinances? If you take a piece of paper that was made out of wax and melt it down and then pour it back into the mold again, how many things can you read that were on that list before. That's what God's saying about you. That's what he did. He he blotted out. It was melted down. There was a new list. And it was placed on the cross. You say, well, God doesn't forget. Yeah, he is. God is almighty and his forgetfulness is almighty too. Amen? Amen. As far as the east is from the You know, sometimes the hardest person for you to accept forgiveness or give forgiveness to is the person you look at in the mirror every morning. Yep. Now, you can't. It's not possible for you to forgive yourself because you're not in the position to forgive anybody, but you can accept God's forgiveness. Amen. And if you don't, you don't have confidence, you don't have peace, you don't have joy, and I know that from personal experience, besides what the Bible tells us. When we don't stop holding things against others or ourselves, we are in the essence saying that we are bigger than God. Hmm. Because God says he's already forgiven, right? Yeah. If we confess our sin. Are we bigger than God? Then let it go. For Christ's sake. We don't know what they did. I don't know what they did, but I do know that nobody has nailed you to the cross and nobody's done to you what you've done to Jesus. That's right. He was made sin for me, although he knew no sin, that sin would might be made the righteousness of God. The Holy Spirit could 
those people of you who already know Jesus is speaking to you about maybe somebody that you need to forgive. Or somebody that has something against you and you're not willing to go tell them you're sorry. Let, let them speak to you tonight. Let them make that thing right. I don't have it within me to do that. You're right. You don't have it within you. But for Christ's sake, when he died, I was bought with a price. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen. Does he deserve 80% of me and give 20% to some grudge? Or does he deserve 100%? 100%. I can't do it within me. I can't throw it out of my mind, but I, I can stop putting it in that person's account when I think of it. For Christ's sake. And then the last thing, all true forgiveness be, uh, is to be given and shared. And we're going to John 13 for that. This is a story about at the Passover when Jesus is washing their feet. Peter goes up, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, if I don't wash your feet, then you don't have any part of me. He says, give me a whole bath. He says, Peter, you don't need a whole bath. You just need to wash your feet. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to get clean every day. And every moment. But Peter didn't get it right away. Jesus says, this is why I'm doing this. So that you can understand. Forgiveness is not a clean word. Is washing feet a clean word? Mm -hmm. no. It's a very humbling thing to wash somebody else's feet. It's a very humbling thing when you have to ask for forgiveness. It's a very humbling thing when you have to give forgiveness even when you don't feel like it. For Christ's sake. But he didn't give it just for you to be forgiven. but so that people, just like you and me, can experience the freedom that comes from being clean, completely clean before God. Hmm. What's going through your heart right now? All true forgiveness begins and ends with the heart of God. The person who is offended has the right to set the price for forgiveness. He who is offended must pay the price, not the offender. He who forgives must also forget. Forgiveness is to be given and shared. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. For Christ's sake, would you forgive that person that the Holy Spirit is putting up? I don't feel like it. Well, it doesn't have to feel like it. For Christ's sake, are you going to say, it's before you, God, I can't do it. But I'm trusting you for it. Because true forgiveness begins and ends the heart of God. Perhaps tonight you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and you've been trying to please God some other way by coming to church or getting baptized or whatever it might be. But without shedding of blood, if you come to Jesus and say, I want to be forgiven your way, that I'm a sinner, I need you to save me, and I believe Jesus when he hung there for me, hung there for me, so that I could be forgiven, and he rose again. You know that person in the mirror that you see every morning that you've not forgiven? For Christ's sake. Simon was worried about who was watching that night, wasn't he? Back in Luke chapter 7. He was worried about all of his friends and what they would think if he actually got right with God. Yeah. And he never got right with God. The woman didn't care. All she cared about was getting things right with Jesus. Amen. I ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Father, your word has been preached. Your heart has been 
laid bare before the people of how much you care about this thing called forgiveness. Yes. Right where they're at tonight, Lord. I'm just going to be silent for a moment. May they, they call out to you and talk to you. And before they go to bed, make sure this thing is right and that the grudge is gone. might be an old person, they might be a teenager. That they would just pray right now with me if they're really sincere. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Yes. And I know I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to be forgiven. But I thank you so much and I want to give my life to you. Yes. Save me. I want to live for you. Father, whatever the need is, you do that tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have a need tonight to come up to the altar and talk to God about things, sometimes that helps seal it. Or you can do it in your pew, or you can do it in your car. But let me give you a hint. Don't give the devil an opportunity to take what's in your heart right now and take it away. That's right. He will do it every time. If God is speaking to your heart before you leave the pew right now, if there's somebody in this church that you're not right with, before you leave this room tonight, go talk to that person and see the explosion of the Holy Spirit that can happen in this place. It's an awesome thing. You guys have a great night. You're just Yeah, she's outside. Oh, she's okay. No, that's her. Uh, she's seeing her. her. She's with Bill, so you know. Okay. <laughs> with her mask on. Say that again. Two, three, six. Okay, then I'll get to change that. Yeah.
Mine is uh, come in. Okay. Okay, here's a 302 number. Uh -huh.